the 87th session was a good session. It, uh, it, it, it saw a lot of accomplishments that needed to happen for the state of Texas. Obviously, you always end a session with things left undone and things you wish had crossed the goal line, and, and uh, that's why we have interims. We work on those issues. We continue to do that. It started off kind of slow with COVID-19 protocols in place, and the Capitol felt a little different. The, the floor activity and the kind of relational you know, work that you, you engage in as a member of the House or Senate or with members of the other chamber were harder to, to actually you know, undertake at the beginning. And that sort of changed and evolved as the session progressed, but uh, the session was a good one. We, we ended up in a very good place, a strong economic place for the state of Texas. We ended up with a, a very conservative, very fiscally responsible, balanced budget that addresses all the needs I think that the state has um, and, and will have for the next two years. It's really phenomenal how strong economically the state of Texas is, how robust our economy is. You know, a couple of sessions ago, we bragged about Texas being the 10th largest economy on the planet. Now we are the ninth largest economy on the planet and we have uh, just incredible sales tax collections, general revenue collections available to us. We have a robust uh, you know, oil and gas economy again, and we're seeing great improvement there. We're seeing a lot of good things happen with job growth. We're seeing very exciting innovations across the state and economic uh, activity uh, you know, here at home, of course, and, and that's very, very important, but it's happening statewide. And so uh, it, it, it is still the envy of the other 49 states, and, and a lot of great things happen this session that, that reflect that. And that doesn't happen by accident. There are really good policies that are being put into place that allow us to, to maintain a, a, a very manageable, low regulatory environment, a low tax environment, a business friendly environment. Um, our schools are strong, they're well funded. Higher education opportunities across the state are, are great. I, I love working on health care because I think that is what I refer to as a kitchen table issue. It's something that affects every single person. I don't care what part of the state you live in, what party you belong to, what your background is or your profession. I mean, it's important for us to have quality health care and access to quality health care. So it's an issue that I've felt very strongly about since I you know, entered public service. And in our region of the state, and obviously several other regions of the state, rural health care is extremely important because rural hospitals, for instance, have closed their doors um, in, in high numbers as a trend. Uh, in Texas over the last you know 15 years or so and and our state is becoming more urbanized and so we really have to to protect that safety net of hospitals and those providers and those communities because it's so important not only to the communities but the surrounding regions and folks that, that live in that in those areas so you know this session we we I'm really proud that we were able to fund additional monies to rural hospitals to the tune of about 123 and a half million dollars. Uh, also it's about my third session, third or fourth session to really uh, stress the importance of telehealth and telemedicine. Um, this session I authored and, and passed House Bill 4 um, with the help of a lot of colleagues in the House and, and uh, uh, Senator Buckingham over in the Senate was the sponsor of that bill and we made permanent a lot of the waivers that had been uh, granted by the by the state for uh, telehealth and telemedicine provisions during the pandemic for chip and medicaid uh, recipients and, and consumers and waiver programs all across the state and what it did was really build off of the foundation that we had laid last session and the session before making telehealth and telemedicine more accessible to texans everywhere so now millions of folks uh, are enjoying and will continue to enjoy uh, you know, access to quality health care through telehealth and telemedicine where it's appropriate. And it's efficient, it's safe, it's cost effective, it's good for the providers, and it's really good for patients. So very excited about that as well. Um, I was able to, uh, to, to pass House Bill 2595, which was a really good bill following up on some mental and behavioral health uh, issues that I have addressed in several sessions prior to this 87th session. And then uh, one of the other bills I'm proud of that passed was Senate Bill 827, which is an insulin uh, expense bill. 
and um, I had a bill, a separate bill, a house bill that that uh, was was very similar in nature, but worked with um, Senator um, Colcourst and Representatives um, Talarico in the House and Lucio the Third, and um, and we all worked on that language, and it passed, and I'm really proud of that because. Uh, I met with families of diabetic children and, and diabetics uh, not just here at home but across the state uh, throughout the last couple of years and really didn't understand until I met with them how drastically different the cost of insulin was for those insured patients, you know, just everywhere from, you know, maybe as low as $75 to $100 a month to in excess of $900 a month. And and so it was, it was important for Texas to take the lead and and uh, cap those expenses. So that bill did pass. It's on the governor's desk and it will cap the cost of, of those insulin products to $25 a month. So um, I think that's going to be good, good health care policy going forward for us too. There's a ton of satisfaction on working uh, with my colleagues in the House and in the Senate and with the governor's office on issues that affect uh, you know, millions of Texans to make uh, life here better, more attractive for people. So it's really important because it creates an environment that, um, you know, we all live under. And this is one of the things I love about the Texas legislature is, you know, it's a, it's a part-time legislative process. And so we, we are down there for 140 days every other year. Laws are crafted and debated and ultimately passed. And then everybody goes home to their districts and, and lives under the laws that that were made and so um, it's really important for those policies to reflect you know um, kind of our, 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 our grit, our, our desire, our determination, uh, the nature of who we are. Um, Texans are very resilient, resourceful, very prideful you know with regard to our heritage um, and so all the things that, that get rolled into that um, and, and how we reflect that in the policies that we develop are critical and, and I think it's it's uh, the proof's in the pudding I mean it's it's shown by the fact that we are um, you know just like I said the envy I think of the 49 other states you know in, in the country we see tremendous job growth we see tremendous business activity it's a great place for folks to raise their families and for their kids to go to school and for opportunities to exist and and we, you know, one data that no one can argue with, one data point is we're going to pick up two congressional seats because of the population growth, this uh, redistricting cycle. And, you know, that means other states are losing population and Texas is gaining population. And so it's, it's no secret that, um, that the policies that we're developing and, and the kind of climate that we're creating here on purpose is, is a, uh, a good formula for success.